Hello friends, this will be the third lecture of microbiology lecture series and in this lecture we want to talk about the bacterial sporulation mechanism and we know spore formation is one of the most important aspect of bacterial uh, body and bacterial structural differences. So we want to talk about that in much more details in this video. So stay tuned and watch this video. And another internal structures that I must say before going into other topic is the spores or which is also known as the endospores. Endospores are insert, inert, resting cells produced by some of the uh, G plus genera like Clostridium, Bacillus and Sporosania. Okay, Sporosarcina have two phase of life cycle, vegetative cell as well as endospore life cycle. Now, both this, oh no, all this bacteria like, you know, Clostridia, Bacillus, Sporosarcina, all of these bacterial species, they have a normal way of division, vegetative cell of division, vegetative growth, like metabolically actively cell growing and cell splitting, like binary fission and new cells are produced always. But apart from that, they always have this additional feature of producing inert resting component of their own cell, like a plant seed, uh, like which are known as endospores. When exposed to adverse environmental conditions, they're capable of high resistance and very long-term survival in that harsh environment because they're covered with several external cover layer outside and the surrounding that's helping them to be protected against the environmental damages but when the environment turns normal then those spores can again shift the gear to normal vegetative mode of cell division so we we call the process of spore development as a sporulation hardiest uh, so spores are hardiest of all life forms and they withstands extreme heat drying freezing radiation and chemicals and not a means for reproduction this is not generally a mean of reproduction this is not a conventional mode of reproduction neither this is just a method to survive and pass the time duration of the harsh environment if a bacteria is put inside. So they will produce a spore and the spore will help them to, to pass that time period through that environmental harshness and ultimately when they return to the again optimal temperature, pH and the environmental balance, the spore will again continue to divide like a, like a vegetative fashion and the germination as i said return to vegetative growth when the environment is feasible now the process of sporulation is molecular molecularly complex but what i can say here is a schematic simple representation of spore formation but before that think about the vegetative growth the vegetative growth like uh, this is a bacteria let's say bacillus species and in this case bacillus anthracis is, is a species that can develop spores so this is a bacillus anthracis species and we have this uh, the vegetative growth that means the bacterial chromosome is duplicated separated into the two cells and cells are separated by a septum that's a normal vegetative growth pattern right but now let's imagine that the cell instead of going inside the vegetative pattern the environment turned very very difficult for them to survive even though they divide and produce new cell new cells will not survive in the environment which is sensed by the bacterial cell so they will opt for sporulation so what they will do the very first step here is the dna replication the replication start extending and it extends into an axial filament and while it start forming axial filament it's not like the typical septum that forms almost equally from the middle and the center point of the cell no in this case the septum forms near one pole separating four spore from the mother cell and at this time the dna is being replicated and dna is being transported to that fourth spore okay and then the third step is when the mother cell start engulfing that fourth spore and as the mother cell is engulfing the fourth spore that membrane which the spore earlier had is one as now the mother cell is engulfing it so it gets the second layer of the uh, of the membrane so now the co now the chromosome is inside a double layer of membrane okay then the stage four well chromosomes of mother cells dis disintegrate Okay, mother cell chromosome gets disintegrated because we don't need that mother cell's chromosome enough because you don't need any further growth. We need the spore to remain healthy inside. So spore remains as it is because the intact chromosomal DNA is already transferred inside the spore. And then uh, the deep 
So dipicolinic acid is synthesized and calcium is incorporated into the spore coat. So now that's the beauty, that's almost the end where the dipicolinic acid is synthesized and particularly calcium deposits on the surface of the spore membrane. So remember, the spore had a DNA inside, the bacterial chromosome inside and in outside there is a double layer of cell membrane and outside we have dipicolinic acid and this calcium start depositing to form a very hard shell on the surface and once the spore coat is fully formed then the phosphor develops into a cortex layer of peptidoglycan between the original phosphor membrane and the membrane from the mother cell once this structure is formed then the time for the spore to come out so the mother cell release spore after some time so the spore will remain inside the mother cell it may remain inside the mother cell or sometimes the spore can be cracked open the mother cell will crack itself open the spore will be spread uh, to the neighboring environment but when if the environmental condition returns to the optimum state and we know bacterial growth requires optimum temperature they have a temperature range for the survival they have a pH range for the survival proper nutrient supply for the survival and when all these components are equal and optimum for the bacteria to grow then the spore will be released by cracking the mother cell open and once the spore is released now the spore will germinate that means the spore now is converted into a mother cell now that cell will now involved in the process of vegetative cell growth and normal process of binary fission will continue for this spore converted into mother cell so the endospores are simply as dehydrated metabolically inactive components of of the mother cell they have a very thick coat made up with what dipicolinic acid and calcium deposits on the top of bilayer of cell membrane they have a longevity uh, and and also sometimes immortality sometimes like 250 million years can be the immortal timing for the bacterial spores which is insane okay resistant to ordinary cleaning and methods of boiling even though you boil it very high temperatures as they have this dipicolinic acid and calcium on the surface uh, pasteurization cannot kill those spores and also other methods of bacterial killing like moist heat dry heat and all these process are not going to kill the spores so now when the spore is provided into the food let's say the spore is present in our food even though we we boil it uh, we pasteurize it but after a certain time that boiling is not enough the spore can return uh, to life return to vegetative cell within certain some some hours when they found their environment to be optimum for them to thrive so pasteurization steam will destroy the spore for if you do the pasteurization for 20 to 30 minutes at 120 degrees celsius temperature then only you can destroy the spores only boiling at 100 degrees celsius temperature will not kill and remove the spores so remember even not all form of pasteurization can kill the spore uh, and there are also few spores cannot be killed with the common pers pasteurization but generally pasteurization is good enough to kill the spores if you pasteurize it if you f boil the mixture with this spore at 120 degrees celsius temperature for 20 to 30 minutes at a constant pressure which is not mentioned in there though then only you can kill uh, that spore but imagine a structure so complex and so important that it will not allow uh, the bacteria to even get killed it will even survive for 250 million years which is insanely huge de delay right and then the bacteria can come to life that is really crazy okay friends hope you understood the mechanism of bacterial sporulation and the use of bacterial spore so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that bye